Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Hunky Vape. I'm your host, DJ Alex. And today we're going to be taking a look at the Sigeli Humvee 80. Is this an end product or a mislabeled technology product? Ain't nothing to it, but to get into it. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this right here is the Sigeli Humvee 80. The FDA just gave it a warning letter being a misbranded or adulterated product because it did not uh, pass the whole PMTA process. Its PMTA application was rejected as not being appropriate for the protection of public health. But it doesn't need really to get a PMTA. I mean, is this closer to this than it is a cigarette? Does this contain any tobacco derivatives whatsoever? And according to this label, it says that the product contains nicotine. I don't believe that this product contains nicotine. So technically that is a mislabeled product, but they did that to meet regulatory requirements created by your legislators and enforced by the Food and Drug Administration. And the longer that the Food and Drug Administration keeps playing these games with the public, the more public harm is being created by their very actions. So we're gonna open and unbox this thing to determine is this an end product or is this just a bunch of technology? a bunch of miscellaneous things put together that by itself couldn't hurt a fly. Well, I personally think it's closer to this than it is a cigarette. We're not talking about something like the Views Alto that you go into a convenience store and you buy a complete device that includes something that may contain some type of tobacco derivative as a complete smoking cessation product. This being defined as an ENDS, electronic nicotine delivery product, I can completely understand. This is what it looks like when you have an electronic nicotine delivery system. You have a self-contained singular item which contains a battery that may have LED lights that light up when it's being utilized you have a microprocessor that controls the heater and the light. You have a sensor that detects when there is airflow and the person takes a drag. You have a heater which vaporizes the containing liquid and nicotine. And you have a cartridge that holds the dissolved nicotine in propylene glycol. And you also have a hole where the vaporized fluid can be inhaled by the end user. Does this meet that requirement and definition? Is this an ENDS product? Or is this just simply a piece of technology that is now removed for the US market for the protection of public health? I honestly think that the removal of this product is a sign that the FDA does not care about the public health because this product being removed from the marketplace is just another chunk removed from the smoker's arsenal to quit their deadly habit. So I'm not gonna beat around the bush any longer. Let's flip it and take a look at this product. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we have the Sigeli Humvee 80. Here's the side of the package, here's the front of the package, here's our lovely warning stating that this product contains nicotine, and nicotine is an addictive chemical. Well, I don't believe that this thing contains nicotine, and the only way to find out whether it does or not is to get a hold of one of these and open it up and find out for ourselves. What's the benefit of the FDA requiring manufacturers to put that warning on there? Do they actually think that it's going to stop somebody from purchasing this? If you're a smoker, the whole reason why you're gonna purchase this is 
to get the nicotine that you're gonna need to quit smoking. And as a smoker, purchasing a product like this, I would be highly disappointed if it did not contain nicotine for me to be able to quit smoking. And I would be pissed off at the FDA for making a company put a label warning on there that is a bold-faced lie. Wow, the saran wrap that is on this package, I can't believe how much it's really sticking to this. I've never experienced shrink wrap that did not want to let go of the package that it's on. All right, so we slide it out and inside we have the Sigeli Humvee. And look at that beautiful coloring. That does look kind of like a Humvee. Nice militaristic colors and a nice rubbery texturized feel. This one's got kind of a rubbery feel to it. This is more of a painted plastic feel. And then this is kind of a tough, hard rubber feel like you would feel on the lugs of boots worn by the military. Nice. Is there nicotine in here? Well, it says a battery, 18650 battery goes in there. You can see that. Okay. No nicotine. Let me get all this stuff out of here. What else do we have in here? Well, we have a pod and inside the pod we have a coil. Looks exactly like a Vupu PNP coil. This is the Sigeli fog coil, 0 0.3 ohms, 32 to 40 watts. Mesh, cotton, and some gasket material to make the seal with this pod tank. Well, I don't see any nicotine in here. Nice little flap on the bottom for you to be able to fill a tank with whatever you choose to fill it with. And it is a tight fit because of this rubber. It doesn't snap into place like some other devices that are out there. Take a look at the Vupu PNP. See how that one drops in there with the magnetic? Well, this one doesn't drop in there. You actually have to press it into place. And between the tension of this rubber piece and the magnets that are on there, that looks like it's gonna be pretty stable. I don't see anything here that's gonna harm the public. You have a nice firm ability to change the opening on here. What else comes in the box? Where's the nicotine that they promised was gonna be in this box? Look, they even have a little tab for you to pull it out. Zagelli was doing a great job when they manufactured this. And they thought about everything and tried to anticipate what was gonna be required to keep their product on the market. However, obviously the FDA has other plans for them. This, however, does not help remove the box, which is cockeyed in there now. People want to ask me all the time, you know, why are you so mad all the time? Well, I abhor hypocrisy. And when you have an organization like the FDA that's supposed to be out there protecting us and is out there doing things that are, they know is intentionally going to hurt people and harm more people than they protect, you should have a problem with that too. So what do we have inside this little box? Quality control certificate from Sigeli. Pass. My question is, do they actually have ones of these that say rejected, that they throw into a bin for it to not meet packaging? That's not the point. Warranty centers worldwide information Please keep your original receipt. All right. 
manual checking. If you want the manual, you're going to have to go to their website. See, since the FDA sent a warning letter to them stating that their product did not meet PMTA requirements to obtain marketing order for the United States, they have since removed everything from their website about the Segeli Humvee 80. Is that appropriate for the protection of public health? I'm gonna go and check and see if the manual is available. I don't know. You shouldn't need a manual for a piece of technology. Technology products are designed so that you can just fiddle your way around, figure it out, and enjoy the technology for what it is. Well, let's take a look at this. Is there nicotine in this? There wasn't in the one that was in the pod. No, that looks like dry cotton. Can cotton, removing cotton from the marketplace be appropriate for the protection of public health? Is this Coilmaster Pro Cotton a tobacco product? It certainly doesn't contain any tobacco derivatives in there. All it has is 100% organic cotton made in the USA. Are they gonna remove this from the marketplace because they're gonna say it's appropriate for the protection of your health? No, they're not going to. Not yet, at least. That would be the abomination of hypocrisy. Taking something that was 100% cotton and forcing it to be redefined as a tobacco product, even though it has nothing to do with tobacco, until you take and do a bunch of things, making it harder for a smoker to transition away from cigarettes. So, is this product right here, the way it's set up, a tobacco product? For us vapors, we can see where they're coming from because we can take an 18650 battery and put it in here and we can take our own e-liquid that we make and put it in here and use it to stay away from deadly combustible cigarettes. But for the average American consumer out there, can this, part, can this product harm you? No, by itself, this is nothing but a piece of technology. This contains no tobacco derivatives, no nicotine, no nothing whatsoever. This is essentially fog juice. And this is essentially a micro fog machine. There's no reason for the FDA to be involved in this device whatsoever, other than verifying the safety of the product. If they say that this thing, you know, is capable of being limited for safety reasons to not have the battery blow up, okay, that sounds logical and reasonable reason for somebody to investigate and spend time on this and spend it instead of spending time on other things that actually do kill people. Here's my problem. Misplaced trust. Why the FDA approval doesn't guarantee drug safety or any safety whatsoever. Take a look at this article on Drug Watch and you can find out about 37-year-old Timothy Woody Wizak's doctor giving him Zoloft samples to help him sleep. Woody and I never once questioned the drug. Why would we? Zoloft is an FDA approved, given to him by his doctor and advertised and sold as safe and effective. A couple days later, Woody started to experience side effects, including diarrhea, night sweats, trembling hands, nightmares, and worsening anxiety. Woody became highly agitated and irritable. His insomnia worsened. He described feeling like his head was outside of his body. Woody sought the help of his doctor. And he said, this is what's going on with this shit. This isn't right. Something's wrong here. Do I need to keep taking this? What's going on? 
and his doctor told him that he needs to keep taking the Zoloft because it takes four to six weeks for it to start working. Five weeks later, Woody, a happily married, energetic, compassionate, and cheerful man with a successful career, was dead. He hung himself in the garage. We were shocked at the suicide, Kim said. He had no history of depression or mental illness. That night, my brother-in-law went home and Googled Zoloft and suicide. He was shocked to learn that the FDA had hearings on Prozac and suicide back in 1991. And he told me, I think I know what killed Woody. The family discovered Zoloft and FDA approved antidepressant led to Woody's tragic death. Unfortunately, what Woody's family didn't know is that the FDA's approval process may favor drug companies over consumers, and FDA approval does not guarantee safety. In fact, Big Pharma actually pays for the majority of drug safety reviews, provides the FDA with safety data for their review application process, and has the option to have drugs approved faster with fewer clinical trials. We're not talking about drugs here. We're talking about FDA approval for the protection of public health. Have you ever heard of any vapor committing suicide because they were vaping? Of course not. Just because it's a tobacco product does not mean that it's going to hurt you. That's the whole benefit of vaping over smoking. It's common sense, fundamental science. You don't need a doctoral degree to understand the safety of vaping to quit smoking. The FDA's approach to regulation of nanotechnology products. Now we're getting closer to where vaping is compared to cigarettes. How is the FDA going to regulate nanotechnology products? Well, you can take a look at the article yourself, but I'll save you the, the whole thing. They're gonna take a backseat approach, and unless the, the nanotechnology is actually inserted into you, well, they're not too concerned about it. They tell you that they're going to look out for your, your best interest in your health. So let's get a little closer to what actually goes on with PMTAs and FDAs. Let's take a look at a product that the FDA has already approved because they determined that it was appropriate for the protection of public health. Let's take a look at the PMTA application for Swedish Match North America for Loose Snus, a smokeless tobacco product. What did the FDA utilize to determine if this product was appropriate for the protection of public health? Well, according to the FDA, FDA will deny a PMTA and issue no marketing authorization order that the product may not be introduced or delivered for introduction into interstate commerce under section blah, 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 blah. If they find that there is a lack of showing of marketing the product is appropriate for the protection of public health. The methods, facilities, and controls used in manufacturing, processing, or packaging do not conform to manufacturing regulations issued under Section 906E. The proposed labeling is false or misleading. It is not shown that the product complies with any tobacco product standard in effect under Section 907 and there is not adequate information to justify deviation from the standard. What justification do you need to have for a hardware item, a hardware technology product, to not lie to the consumer and say, there's nicotine in this product. There is no nicotine in hardware devices. And that device by itself is incomplete, cannot be used for anything until you complete the process, add the battery, and decide what fluids you're going to put in there. And even then, it is nothing more than a personal fog device. 
It is nothing more than a tiny fog machine. The microfogger is a tiny fog machine perfect for creative photos. The microfogger is a tiny handheld fog machine that lets you create fog on a small scale when your space and or budget are limited. The microfogger is the world's most versatile special effects fog solution. Workshop Science is about its product. It can produce a vast amount of non-toxic fog and is extremely portable. It can easily fit into your pocket, which makes an ideal situations where space is limited. Powered by an internal battery that eliminates the need for a cable and external power source, the microfogger can put out about 45 minutes continuously. Used intermittently, it's designed to have the power to complete a photo shoot without needing to recharge via the USB port. So my question is, what's so different about this microfog machine, which isn't a technology, which, which is obviously considered a photography technology product, and the Segelli Hum V80? Side note, I love the fact that Segelli has always made their products, their own products, but their products are essentially the same thing as other people's products. They take a bunch of different designs, put them together to make up their own things, and in the process, they don't exclude themselves from everyone else. See, the nice thing about Segelli is their coils are compatible with other people's stuff. This time, their coil seems to be exactly compatible with Vupu. And I can take the Segelli fog coil and put it in this Vupu drag, which is also an incomplete product because there's no battery, can't work without a battery, and use that as a personal fog machine or as a vapor, I can use it to stay away from deadly combustible cigarettes. Previous designs of Segelli were intercompatible with smock products. So if you couldn't get a Segelli coil, well, you can just go get a smock TFVA coil and pop it in your device and use it that way. The FDA is only making the situation worse by trying to wipe these devices off the marketplace. And requiring manufacturers to lie to you, this product contains nicotine, nicotine is an addictive chemical, when the product clearly shows it has zero milligrams in it, is not appropriate for the protection of public health. None of these products that are out here are going to hurt you unless you misuse them and abuse them. And I can literally take this flashlight, if I really wanted to, and I could modify it to be a vaping device. It really wouldn't take that much to convert this into this. That's how vaping originally got started. And that's how the culture of vaping developed. And the battery that operates this can also operate this and can also be used in dozens of other devices, portable drills, soldering machines. So is the FDA doing any benefit by issuing a warning letter to Segelli? Or is it just postponing the number of smokers that are going to switch over and transition to vaping in order to reduce their harm? The answer is quite obvious. I was debating about postponing this thing, but you know what? There's already a review out there. You can go check it out. If you truly want to know about the Segelli Hum V80, the advantage of this device is there's a 510 adapter for it. And I already ordered one, which lets you take this and convert this to other things. And like many other technology products out there, my phone included, you can buy other attachments to increase the functionality of that product and make it more helpful. 
If the FDA keeps up with this regulatory approach, don't be surprised if this is going to be sold as a soldering iron or a flashlight to keep it on the market. This is not going to bode well for the FDA and its protection of public health. We already know what happens when the FDA approves drugs that end up killing people. Well, now they are literally trying to eliminate products that are saving people's lives. Sorry for the rant, folks. It's not what you were expecting when you were looking for a Segeli Humvee 80, but it's clearly obvious that this is not an electronic nicotine delivery system. And the labeling on the package is false and misleading because the government required them to put that information on there. Even though everybody knows it's a bold faced lie. So until next time, be good to each other and keep on vaping. Regardless of what the FDA is trying to tell you,